Every day, I will wear the full armor of God. I put on the belt of truth so I can fight the devil's lies. I put on the armor of godliness to protect my heart and do what's right. I put on the good news boots so I'll be ready to show God's love all day. I hold up the shield of faith to block anything the enemy sends my way. I put on the helmet of salvation so I'll remember God will always love me. I use the sword of the Spirit because God's word is my best weapon against the enemy. Now, I stand firm and pray. Just uh, a little, well, I was, I was practicing, practicing, just in case something decided to stop by today and I had to use these swords to defend myself. Anyway, speaking of swords, we are actually going to put on the sword of the spirit today. I know, we've been putting on the armor of God, and today we're going to put on the sword of the spirit. Wow. But before we get into the sword of the spirit, guys... Let's do the number one most important thing we do before we start any event. Pray. So let's pray. So we'll start in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for giving us a chance to gather today over video uh, and to learn about the amazing armor that you give us to defend us in spiritual battle to help us to stay and be holy and to love and serve you in a world where sin and evil exist. But Lord, you give us the tools to defend ourselves against those evils. And Lord, our defense is your love. So Lord, as we learn about the sword of the Spirit, let us always be reminded that you love us. And so Lord, we pray together as we pray in the words you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guys, so before we go into the sword of the Spirit... I just wanted to pause for a moment and talk about a real sword. We all know what a real sword is, but just to have a reminder of what a real sword can do, check out what this katana can do to the adversaries of fruit. Yes, I'm talking pineapples, watermelons, mangoes, bananas. They don't stand a chance against this sword. So a good, well-sharpened sword can cut through almost anything. So let's see what a well-sharpened sword can do to fruit. Check it out. So, 
That is amazing, right? Can you believe that Katana was able to cut through that fruit like it was nothing? So, before we go into our Bible story today, I want to share one more story. And actually, you'll notice some similarities between this story and our Bible story we're about to hear. Um, because in this story, it comes from one of my favorite video games. It's called The Legend of Zelda. Many of you have probably played it. And if you haven't played it, you've probably heard of it, whether you've got an older brother uh, or you know friends that have played it. It is one of my favorite video games of all time. And here's why. Because the hero of time, or the, the, the hero in the story, is he always has to fight some evil. And in this case, the, the villain's name is Gan Ganondorf. Is his name. Weird name, right? Anyway, so the hero has to fight evil. But before he can, he needs to be properly equipped. And the whole point, part of the game is you find the pieces of equipment that's going to help you fight. And so in this story, one of the main pieces of equipment that the hero must get is what they call the Master Sword. And the Master Sword is what helps him seal away evil forever. So let's listen to the story, and then we'll go into our Bible story afterwards. And I want you to see if you can find anything similar, um, because there's a lot of similarities. And what I want to point out is that our Sword of the Spirit is similar to the sword from the Hero of Time, and that it helps us fight against evil that we may encounter in our lives. So let's check out this story real quick. Wow, guys, isn't that amazing? You see, there, there's so much there, so much more. I could do a whole other video just on that game alone. But I wanted you guys to see that a sword is a powerful weapon when sharpened properly and when used properly. It can be used to defend yourself against an attack. And so God knows this. God knows that we live in a world where bad things can happen. And so he gives us the tools to defend and fight against those bad things, those evil things, lies, the devil. 
any kind of evil that attacks us, whether it's through the devil or others. Others can hurt us as well. And so the sword of the Spirit is not, like we don't, we, we don't go out to harm others, but we go out to defend ourselves and to remind ourselves of the truth. And what is the truth? That God loves us. God loves me and he loves each one of you individually. He loves you so much. And so he gives you the tools to defend yourself. He gives you his grace, a way to live holy lives. And he also gives you his word. So let's now turn to the Bible, God's word, which is also an encounter with Jesus. And let's see how Jesus used God's word, the word of his father, to defend against the devil when he was tempted. Check it out. Even though you can't see it, there's a spiritual battle taking place between God and the devil over the hearts of each person on earth. Since the beginning of time, God has been fighting for people to know the truth. There was a time when Jesus himself needed to remember what was true to be able to defeat the enemy. One day, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. He was out there for 40 days and 40 nights without anything to eat. You can probably imagine that Jesus was very hungry. The devil came to Jesus while he was in the desert and tried to tempt him three different times. The first time, the devil could tell that Jesus was hungry, so he tried to use that against Jesus. He said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus quoted from the scriptures and said, It is not just bread that keeps people alive. Their lives depend on what God says. Then the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off, because the scriptures say, God will command his angels to help you, and their hands will catch you, so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. But Jesus saw that the devil was trying to use the scriptures against him. So Jesus said, The scriptures also say that you should never test God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. The devil said, If you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this. But Jesus had had enough. He told the devil, Get away from me, Satan. The scriptures say to worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Because Jesus used God's word, he was able to defend himself when he was tempted. In the same way, the enemy will engage us in battle by tempting us to do what is wrong. When we feel like making fun of someone, lying, or doing something that we know is not what God says is best, we can use the sword of the Spirit to defend ourselves against that temptation. We can hold up the sword of the Spirit. Well, guys, there you have it. So the sword of the Spirit is God's Word. And if we know God's Word, especially our memory verse for today, put on the armor of God to defend against the devil's evil evil lies. So we put on God's armor to defend ourselves from attack and then he gives us the sword of his spirit to fight against temptation because we've all been tempted to do something we shouldn't, right? Mom says clean your room. Guess what you want to do? You want to go play video games. You want to play The Legend of Zelda, Mario Kart, Astro Bears. You want to play with the Lincoln Logs, the Hula Hoops, the Connect Four, Checkers, you name it. You want to do anything else but clean your room, right? That's what you're tempted. But if you have the sword of the Spirit, you can fight off that temptation by reminding yourself of God's word. And what does God tell us? God says, honor your mother and your father. So God's word reminds us of a truth. The truth is we should listen to our parents when they ask us to clean our rooms. So we use God's word to fight off against temptation. And that's what the sword of the Spirit is for to help us not just fight against evil, but to be holy ourselves. And what it means to be holy is to be like God. So every time we fight off a temptation, we grow in our likeness to God. And God is pleased with us for using the tools that he gave us. So now, guys, that's all I've got for today. But hopefully I'll see you all next Sunday for Xavier Kids Live. We're going to put our last piece of armor on, the helmet of salvation. Wow. And then we're going to have some prizes to win, more games to play. It's going to be a blast. 
But we have one more thing we've got to do, and that's give God some praise. So if you're ready, let's praise God. See you guys next week. Got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. You got the belt of truth Put on my boots I gotta tell the good news The armor of God And the shield of faith Got my sword and my helmet Now it's time to pray Put on The full armor of God Stand strong Against the evil one Put on We can stand, stand, stand against every evil plan, plan, plan. Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong. He has won. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on. All right, here we go. Hey, -ah! Oh my gosh, guys, check this out. Woo, look at that. Sliced right through that roll. Can you believe that? Boom.